my name is Mason Lee, and I will be sharing with you the key consideration for the material selection in EV thermal management applications. I work on the system expert team here at DSM Engineering Plastic, and I'm excited to present the webinar today. Before uh, I start, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm an advanced engineer manager in the DSM Engineer Plastic and globally responsible for thermal management system uh, material application. My background, I have a 20 years experience in automotive industry, mainly focused on the engineer development and technical specification for the thermal management system with uh, my knowledge in the heat transfer, product design, and the system development, as well as, as, well as uh, material development. Before I start the webinar, I have a couple housekeeping items to cover. We would like to hear from you during the today's presentation. If you have a question for me, please feel free to send it using webinars a chat feature. I will answer your question by email after the webinar is complete. Also, after the webinar ends, a link to it will be shared with you via email. You can watch the webinar again on demand if you like. You may also forward this webinar link to your colleague that have an interest in learning about EV summer management system. Okay, today my presentation will start with a brief introduction of the DSM engineer plastic, and then we move on to the EV thermal management system overview and the design chain a challenge. With those information, we will talk about the material selection and we will finish with a summary of the presentation. So some of you know the DSM, some may not know, and I would like to use this opportunity, have an introduction of our company. DSM is a global uh, science-based company. Our product covers uh, life science group and also material science group. I work in the DSM engineer plastic, which is a majority part of a material science group. Our company is a global company, has a, about a 10 billion euro annual revenue and uh, 23,000 employees globally. And uh, let's look at the uh, engineer plastic. Our team has uh, over 300 R&D people and also we spend about 6% of the and revenue annually. Also, we have a 22% sales innovational sales, and 54% the total sales are eco related. So, our focus on the delivering transformational performance in heat resistance, flexibility, durability, breakability, and more. So our business R&T and operation are organized globally. We have the footprint cover all the major continents, and we also have the R&T center in Europe, also in North America and in Asia. So we can support our customer 24 by 7 globally. Our product main focused on the high performance plastic and you can see here with the high temperature high performance group the PA40, 46 and 410 is made of our unique four block polymer and we also have a PPS, TPC, PET, PA66, PA6 and the PBT in our product line. So DSM is a leading innovator in the high performance polyamide. So let's talk about the EV summer management system. So automotive summer management system start from a powertrain summer management system 
In the past, we only talk about powertrain cooling with a recent energy efficient focus. Now we're talking about uh, not only the cooling, also the uh, the warming up performance is very important. So now it's a powertrain thermal management. And then later on, the passenger cabin thermal management system is add-on. It's also called the AC system or HVAC system to make uh, the passenger comfortable. Recently, with the EV vehicle, the battery and the electronic system also require the thermal management. As a train, all those thermal management systems demand the fuel economy and the lightweight and precise control. So let's see what is unique for the EV thermal management system. Especially in the hybrid EV, the more thermal management system add on the vehicle, Beside the traditional combustion engines, man, uh, thermal management system, the battery pack required uh, ma uh, thermal management to keep the temperature in the narrow range and also considering the charging time for the battery, the safeguard material for the aging wear required for 6,000 hours to 10,000 hours. And the traction e motor also requires the proper cooling to ensure the torque and also the power control requires the cooling to make sure the battery efficiency. This map showing the requirement for the material at a coolant environment. So the X actual showing the exposure time to the coolant and the Y actual showing the temperature for the aging. And the coolant is a 50-50% water glycol solution. As you can see, the, the blue block showing the traditional ICE engine and normally require a thousand hour until the three thousand hour exposure time and the temperature is high and uh, starting from 110 to 135 and some even ask for 150. But for the battery vehicle, you can see here the temperature is lower but the exposure time is longer. That's because the the battery is need cooling during the charging time. Also, at the extremely low temperature, we need to keep battery warm to make sure uh, battery have enough capacity. So there's also ongoing discussion for other requirements. Uh, the fluid temperature from 80 to 110 C and some system pressure up to three bar for the electronic uh, electric motor, of course, for the expected lifetime up to 10,000 hours for the battery, and also there's a more discussion on non-electrically conductive coolant. So, what's the design challenge? First of all, the higher complexity. Need a more precise control, so more valve or more pump is required for the system. Then the compact design, not only the lightweight, also small package because get a more and more system in the uh, one car, and also the longer operation time. We need to consider the charging time when the vehicle is not running as well. Also the chemical resistance. Now we are talking about not only the cool and the water solution, we also need to consider the new non-electric conductive coolant as well. 
and material strains need to include the weld line strains after long-term aging. So why the, the weld line strains are so critical? The weld line is the weak point of the plastic component because due to the less glass fiber and the resin connection. Also the weld line property are further weakened with aging. And then that's why weld line strains often decide the thickness and the weight of the parts. In the past, our customer major uh, OEM or major uh, parts tier one had a very good expense, uh, experience and did a good job to make sure the weld line is not designed in the critical part of the critical portion of the part, but with more complex design, more weld line become unavoidable. So let's talk about the material selection. This is the same uh, map we just show in the spec. XO showing the exposure time, YXO showing the exposure temperature. With the same exposure time with uh, the more higher exposure temperature, normally we need to move from the base material PA66 to the high performance material, long chain nylon, and then consider the PPA, by the end the PPA. And also we even with the same temperature, when the exposure time getting longer, we need to consider move from the PA66 to nylon, long chain nylon and the PPA, by the end go to the PPS for the best performance. Also for stronger chemical corrosion with the different coolant, the PPS showing the best chemical resistance. Also, there are some other key factor for from product design, sealing. So the dimension stability is critical for the sealing and also the bump up design and also the weld line and secondary process like a deeper and the welding also need to be considered. So there's a comparison with our newly developed PPS grid. The left hand group showing our newly developed G4080 HR, which is the 40% glass fiber reinforced hydraulic resistant grid. And the right hand side showing the competitors 40% glass fiber reinforced grid as well. And you can see uh, the test condition is 50-50 water glycols solution and 135 degree C temperature. You can see the initial state, the tensile strains, there's no big difference our grid is slightly better than the competitor grid. But after 1,000 hours and eventually after 3,000 hours, the G4080 HR is showing 140, uh, 114% higher retained tensile strength than competitor grid. The other key property is the elongation. The elongation showing the same train, the G4080 HR grid showing 63% higher retain elongation after 3000 hours than competitor grid. Let's see the weld line property as well. The weld line property also showing 85% higher than the competitor grid after a thousand hour and uh, the elongation of the weld line also showing 50% higher after a thousand hour. So why the G4080 HR showing the better performance than competitor grid after the 
aging test. So this, those pictures are, we call the ATFM, is atomic force microscope pictures. And uh, the top group showing the G4080HR and uh, the lower group showing the competitive breed. This picture showing the microstructure of the material and the dark portion showing the resin, PPS resin, and the, the bright portion showing glass fiber. You can see at the initial stage, both material showing clear boundary between the PPS and the glass fiber. After thousand hour, the G4080 HR still showing a, keep the clear boundary, but the competitor grid starts showing dark line, which show, means detachment between the PPS resin and the glass fiber. And after 3000 hour, competitor grid is showing the bold line, which is showing the complete detach between the PPS resin and the glass fiber. Well, the G4080HR still showing clear, clean boundary line. So the Zaichong interface technology delivers strong bonding of the PPS resin and the glass fiber. That's why this bonding improves the parts in showing the improved the hydraulic resistance. We will talk about uh, PPS. Let's move on to consider the PPA. In the past, also the PPA has been used in some region. And the PPS is a very good high performance material. And uh, as you can see, the 40A and the 40MX is a DSM grid for the PPA for glass tra transition temperature at the dry condition is showing the highest TG temperature except the peak, and also at a higher temperature, the 48 and the 40 MX showing the highest tensile modules, modules among the other materials. So this PPA material showing a great stiffness at a high temperature. So there's the same chart compared with, between the DSM MX15HR, which is a newly developed PPA material with a 35 glass fiber reinforced hydraulic resistance grid. And also the right hand side showing the same 35% glass fiber reinforced grid, but from competitive grid. So after thousand hour aging, you can see MX15HR showing 11% higher retained tensile strength than competitor. Also for EAB elongation, MX15HR showing 22% higher than competitor grade after 1,000 hours. We also need to look at the weld line strength. The Veldoran string showing the same trend, and uh, after 1,000 hour MS15HR showing 33% higher than the competitive grid. And the Veldoran elongation also showing 20% higher than the competitive grid. So we introduced PPS, we also introduced the PPA. So let's compare the PPS and the PPA. Each material has their own strength. The PPA has advantage at the TG, higher glass transition temperature, also has the uh, ability without the deeper uh, flashing cost. Also, it's good for the bump off design. Does not need a venting. And also can be do the welder, uh, laser welding and hot plate welding. 
Well, the PPA has their own advantage, showing the best chemical resistance, and then the dimensional stability after aging, also the sealing surface after aging is better than the PPA, and the surface appearance is uh, also very good. The PPS also can also process with vibration welding and hot gas uh, welding as well. But the PPS does need a proper tool design to take care of the venting. So as a summary, the so engineer plastic will have more application in EV thermal management system. And DSM is a system solution supplier by providing a full TMS material product portfolio. Also, DSM, Zytron G4080 HR PBS and the 40MX15HR deliver excellent water glycol resistance. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining me for the DSM Engineer Plastic Webinar. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. For more information about the DSM Engineer Plastic, please uh, access DSM uh, Plastic. Also, for information for specific material, please visit www.plasticfunder.com. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.